Hi, I'm Alan Murdoch. For the past 20 years, I've been buying, fixing, and selling properties right here in Southern Arizona. And I want to buy your property. Whether it's a house, apartment, commercial building, or vacant land, regardless of the condition or the situation, I want to talk to you. When you sell to me, I pay cash and it's hassle-free. No repairs, no closing costs, and no commissions. If you have a property you don't want to deal with and you want a quick solution, call, text, or visit SellTalon.com. Again, that's SellTalon.com. Discover the power of 88 Crime, where your anonymous tips are rewarded with cash. When you call in anonymously with a tip, you are given a code. With the code and a password, you can walk into a bank and redeem your reward anonymously. If your anonymous tip results in a felony arrest, you can claim up to $2,500 cash reward. Let's stop the silence on crime and strive for a safer community. For more information, please visit 88crime.org or call 88 Crime. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, CopperCreekCookies.net. We can print anything on our soft vanilla logo cookies. We deliver them and other sweet treats locally. We are located at 4249 West Ina Road, Suite 121. Call us, 520-300-1131. We bake smiles. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, CopperCreekCookies.net. <laughs> no jokes like that this yeah. morning. Yeah. Oh, we're on. Hey You're guys, on. how are you? Welcome to Local Miranda Podcast Stop this it. morning. Feels good to be back in a seat yeah. here yeah. with El Presidente, yeah. Yeah. Clint Peak. Got his coffee there, which is every day is a fresh start. <sighs> Cheers to anybody else drinking their coffee yeah. right now. Let's grab our cups. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Full day. Full day <sighs> today. Yeah. Yep. It feels good. We're going to have a cool guest later on the second half. The Happy Hive Market is going to join us this morning and talk about an event coming up at the Omni, which will be pretty cool. But before we get into that, we haven't had the opportunity to talk about all the stuff going on. In the, on camera. On camera, <laughs> yeah, in the political world. Yeah. And uh, it's really refreshing to see some change, I'm going to say, you know, as an independent voter. <coughs> and... Uh, it's going to be great to talk about a lot of stuff, what happened. We have a video about some tactics they used that were different from from other things. But, you know, let's get into it. How, how are you feeling about the election and everything hey, uh, that happened? I, can we count in uh, Arizona? <coughs> I mean, this is, be, <laughs> this is becoming uh, kind a of, standard here, yeah, right? Yeah, it's becoming a standard. Is there a correlation with our ranking in education I, you know, in the United I, States? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's causing it, but we got to solve it. Because here's the reality. You know right. this. I know this. When things take this kind of time, mm-hmm. if there is doubt in anyone's mind, this enhances it. Yeah. I mean, Florida, <laughs> bless her heart. They were yeah. done in three hours. Right. I don't know what they're doing down there. Yeah. But here we are, uh, actually seven days plus, and mm-hmm. we're still counting. Yeah. Uh, Pima County is still 10% of the vote, roughly, is still out. Come on. Yeah. Come on. What are we doing? <laughs> That's a good I mean, question. seriously. This is, if you're an election official, right, that, and it's your job, this is, this is it. This is your Super Bowl. You don't get to wait, in my opinion, two weeks yeah. to, uh, to uh, come up with a solution or come up with a re- the results, it just uh, that just it's a bad look. How about that? It's very bad. Yeah, you you <laughs> you know, watching the election and waiting for the results, you just saw Arizona sitting there, not done. Yeah, and here we are, what a week and a day yeah. past the election, and the stuff hasn't gotten counted. Yeah. What happens to you as a business owner Clay, well, that's if you don't kind of what I judge if you don't on. get if you don't get your stuff I, done? I, I mean, don't know what, if that's what happens. fair or not, though, David. I don't know if that's fair, but why is it that's not fair? How, that's the lens that I would look at stuff through. Yeah. If anybody else, because it's a business, right. can we agree? Yeah. Politics is a business. Yeah. Uh, if anybody else was doing that anywhere in the world, you were waiting on your your, your delivery of your pizza mm-hmm. or your car was being you wouldn't it, you would want updates uh, yeah. on a regular basis, right? Yeah. 
I don't get it. I I I, I just don't get it. I think we got a lot this is becoming historically. This. Yeah. yeah. This is historic now with 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 uh with Arizona as a state. It's pathetic. It, I I think it's get it, it is. together. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a 35-year-old here in this in this county and, and the state we can't count votes. Yeah. In time, here we are sitting and waiting. What what happens? Let me, what let me what what's the standard for my kids? Yeah. From this point on. Yeah. Y'all need to just fix it. Let, let me, me ask you a I'm question. Sorry. Come if, on. If an emergency happens, and this is kind of an emergency. Yeah. We're, we're voting. We need to get an outcome. Mm-hmm. If something happens, let's say on the street, right. what happens? You block it down. You shut it off, and you get it done. In, in in business, certainly small business, I know that for if, if something happens, you shut it down, you get her done. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. WIT is my operating percent uh, right. uh, motto. Yeah. Whatever it takes. You've got to get the job done. Because what happens is past a day or two, now if there, again, if there's doubters, and I guarantee you there's doubters across the board, mm-hmm. right? I'm, I'm talking politically now. Well, I have I have friends in different states that are going, what the hell are you guys doing yeah, over there? It's embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, bad enough that we're at the bottom of in reading and writing and mm-hmm. math. That's bad enough. Now right. we can't count ballots. <laughs> <laughs> not, that not that that is, should be a, 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 a judgment point. Uh, is it's a call to action. Let's, yeah, let's exactly. be better. You know what I mean? I, Across it, the board. Uh, and this is and this is nonpartisan, by the way. Right. Because. I guarantee you there's Both equal sides amounts, go, yeah. Democrats and Republicans counting right now. Yeah. I mean, it, this is not a partisan issue. Mm-hmm. This is a policy issue. Right. Can we talk about one more thing while we're talking policy? Let's go. How many, how many, uh, um, what, what do they call them? Uh, referendums were on the ballot this Propositions. year. Propositions. Propositions. <laughs> <I'm looking for. clears throat> Enough that we needed there? two pages. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot. And uh, there was a lot of folks I talked to. I think it was 13. 12 to 13, is yeah. that right? I think it was. There's a lot of folks I talked to that kind of just skipped over them because yeah. there were so many. Hey, I think Chris DeSimone and I talked last week on Working Title Podcast. Who's Chris? Chris Christopher DeSimone. <laughs> Christopher D, the big daddy. The big daddy. Uh, the D-train. <laughs> the D-train, oh gosh. <laughs> um, hey, three is enough. I mean, there ought to be, that ought to be, because you know what? You're just wading through the mud at this point. Mm-hmm. First off, uh, how many people really knew what all... But we don't even know what the number was. How many people really knew and investigated 12 to 14 propositions? How many yeah, really knew? Because I, mean, I had people reaching out to me yeah. about what are you what are you doing with this one? And I'm like, well, ha- hang on. Let me double check what I'm doing with this <laughs> one. What <laughs> number is that again? <laughs> even if you took time, right, you used your, your phone or whatever to go just look it up. Just vote for no for all of them or <laughs> yes for all of them. You're half hour plus or, or more to just get through like a basic were, spark note version of this. And so. there were serious ones in there. There were, yeah. uh, I, without, I, yeah, there were serious ones in there that people are pretty passionate about. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying just ignore them, but yeah. when you... I, Chris, Chris used the analogy the other day, or said that said that the Demo- the Republicans were doing this because they couldn't get anything passed through Congress because it would be the the House here locally because they would be vetoed by the by the governor, and but to me that's just lazy politics. Mm-hmm. Well, that's your job. Yeah. That's your job. You need to figure it out. Don't throw it to the public. If we throw everything to the public, what do I need you for? That's a good point. No, I'm serious. If you're going to throw stuff that you can't get through to the public, then I don't need I don't need you there. Yeah. Let's just put a couple people in charge up there to run the state and sign some checks, and we'll we'll just vote on everything. Mm-hmm. Every every month we'll go to the we'll go to the polls and because you were elected for that. Yeah. And you know the reality of it is also politics doesn't move like that's why it's kind of hard to. To judge this based on business, because I, I remember Ed Honey recently was talking to me about a new elected official in the town of Moran. I'm, he was talking to Patrick Kavanaugh. Mm-hmm. He said, hey, look, things work different over here than what you're probably used to. Things that would have taken you a year in the real world might take five years over here, if ever. Because it's politics. We got <clears throat> to slow walk stuff. We got to look stuff. That's There's fine. 
I told him, of course, in our world that lived the dream media, something that might take a year to five years in the in the regular world or five years in the um, political world would take five minutes at live the dream because we're we're lean. We can make you and I can make a decision. Let me ask you a question: Are you trying to justify the 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 slow expectation no, of counting the votes? No, right now? no, I'm not trying to justify it. I'm just saying things work different, and we need we need if if we're not. The point is, I'm actually doing the other. Okay. If, if you can't get the job done, what do we need you for? Right. We've got 90 elected officials in Pima County or in uh, the state of Arizona, 30 30 senators and 60 representatives. Okay. Yeah. Get, go to work. Figure out ways to make things happen. Yeah. Because if you're ha- if you're having to come back to us as the ele- electorate every two years and to pass stuff, yeah, I don't even know what you're doing then. It's well, it's very hypocritical, right? So we're we're under constant regulation. All of us, everybody listening to the show, yeah. everybody that's doing something today, some form of regulation or bureaucracy gets in your way. And, attacks and there's an a, expectation for you to exactly. get the paperwork done and to take care of the stuff you have to do. You want your business license. You need to have it paid before this date. You want your LLC and incorporation papers done. You got to do it this way. Well, you, you want your cable, the, the yeah. lights, the phone. You want to. You want them on. So I'm you sitting here. Them. I'm sitting here as a citizen in this state, born and raised. Going, I, I live up. To, I, I take care of the expectations I have. I know you do. I know a lot of other people in my life do. And it, the call to action on well, the show to. today is like. This has to stop. This expectation that we're going to take two weeks to count votes, stop it. Yeah, I agree. Or go away. Just quit. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, I'm sorry. You guys can write me or whatever you want. I, I don't care. Come on. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I agree 100%. And I'm not going to shut up about it either because I know both sides, like you said, are going, well, what's you, going on you here? You know what? That's a perfect segue to what we what, one of the things you wanted to talk about this morning. Yeah. We're not going to shut up about it. Because doing the right thing is always the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why legacy media has crapped the bed. This is, again, across the board. Nobody's paying attention. Define we, legacy media. Uh, too. I'm talking, I'm talking the, big, the big cats, ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, LA Times, Washington Post, uh, Arizona Daily Star, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. That's who I'm talking about. All, all of them. And and the proof is in we you, we, we went out to lunch yesterday. Old pothole hamburgers mm-hmm. are awesome. Yeah. But look at the numbers. You got a you got a major news organization, CNN, that has drawn less than a hundred thousand viewers for some of their shows. Hundred thousand in a in a country with three hundred million. A hundred thousand is not even like a real number. Mm-hmm. I mean. Now, we would love to have 100,000 viewers here on our podcast. Don't get mm-hmm. me wrong. But nationally, you're a national news organization because that's right. what they are. You're drawing 100,000 for stuff. Some of them were less. I remember reading something the other day. 84,000 people was watching this one show, and I'm like, it's not even a number. Think about it. Mm-hmm. Three million would be 1%. Three million. You're drawing 100,000? Mm-hmm. Hey, for the for those of you that know math, that's not that's not cool. That's not good. Mm-hmm. And He's, and people like Chris Wallace, whose dad was a godfather in this industry, one of the founding godfathers of the news cycle as we know it. Mm-hmm. You know what he's going to do, Chris or uh, David? He's going to leave Legacy Media when his contract's up. Of course, no one's watching him on CNN. Mm-hmm. And you know what? What's he going to do? His own show. He's going to do a podcast. Yeah, or something. No, he's going to do a podcast. Company with, he's, no, he said he's going to do a podcast. He's going to do a podcast. Yeah. yeah. I, and, he, and he goes, I know I'm not going to get the numbers that Joe Rogan and those guys are getting, but mm-hmm. he, look at Tucker. Right. Tucker's got a bigger... Well, we, I don't follow. I don't watch him, but I know his numbers. I'd look at his numbers. His numbers are bigger yeah. as an independent than they were with Fox News, because Fox News is the, the, the granddaddy now at this point. Of, you, know what, but the, you know what their typical drawl is? What's that? Three million again out of a out of a country of three point. Right. Actually, that's a good thing that you're not. I laugh. I'm sorry. You guys are probably going. Oh, you guys are a little company. I laugh because we're we're pretty new still and we're pretty small, but we cleared about sixty five thousand viewers last month. Well, percentage wise, based yeah. on the fact that we're on, we're basically a, a Pima County mm-hmm. 
uh, organization at this point. That's right. going to change. But if we're drawing sixty five thousand out of a million, that the numbers are much higher than yeah. somebody drawing eighty four thousand out of three hundred and thirty million. Yeah. Think about it. So you're telling me people don't want to watch. Folks on TV that are in suits and nice clothing that are saying the same thing as ten other networks. They, they, they that? lie. They're <laughs> condescending. Uh, I don't. I don't want. I. You know what? I never watch them except at election time. It's a circus, and it is a circus. And I was watching all three of the major cable networks. I didn't go to mm-hmm. ABC, NBC, CBS on the regular station, but I was Fox, CNN, and MSNBC. It's a joke. Right. All of them. Yeah. They're, they're propaganda machines. Wild stuff. It's just, it's a joke. You used to, you know, it's funny because I used to look at like, you know, I used to look at podcasts like, like Joe Rogan, right? In the early days and stuff like the, you know, and there's still some crazy conversations that happen on there. But I would, I would say that a lot of us would agree now that, that Joe Rogan has hit this next level where it is an actual way for good information. That's very open feeling. Mm-hmm. And he's one of the best interviewers in the world. We're Unfiltered. Not gonna, we're not yeah. going to edit it. It's just three hours yeah. of raw conversation rather than chopping stuff up. And I ag- I agree with Steve. I think it's Steve Galloway or whatever. Mm-hmm. The, I think that's the video I, I sent good. you that this was the election of the podcast. Yeah. There's always there's often new mediums that are introduced in in election cycles and other stuff like that. And I think that this this legitimately well, you shared had it. you shared it. An the numbers on were. It. Cable was down 22%. Mm-hmm. Podcasts were up over 30%. And mm-hmm. he went back and he talked about FDR with radio. Right. And then Nixon, Kennedy in 60 with TV. And then Barack Obama with Google in 08. Mm-hmm. Then Twitter with with uh, Trump in 16. And now right. podcast in 2024. It's everybody's, everybody's going there. Yeah. And you know what's cool? Right there. Yeah. We have built this medium for ourselves. And the people it. here. And well for but we built it ourselves right. for us to share information mm-hmm. with people in our thank thank you for correcting me because I did that didn't come out the way I wanted it to. But for the people in our community to share, come on, mm-hmm. open dialogue. We've had a lot of that. We've dealt we're now at six hundred podcasts mm-hmm. or seven hundred, I don't even know the number. Right. And it's been it's been open, it's been raw, there's been some Goofy times. There's been serious times. Yeah. Hey, if you want to call in on this chat, you're welcome to. We have our new call in line, 520-477-1106. You saw it pop up on the screen right there if you're watching. Feel free to call in and weigh in on how you're feeling about the election here and the counting of the votes or if you have any other stuff you want to talk about. So going into um, the the back to the podcast stuff, but there's one thing, too, that I, I want to let people know is we're renting the studio out on, on the weekends mm-hmm. for people to come in here and record or sh- stream or stream and record their own shows or, or something they want to cover. If they're trying to put something together for a class or whatever, we have like hourly rates that are available. With, with really uh, talented and skilled engineers to help walk mm-hmm. you through the process. Right, right. Shout so, out to Raul back there, wherever he is. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the idea of independent media is... It's powerful, and I I had posted a video about it the other day, but the key thing about it, you know, is getting the community actually involved. You know, we've always had a community engagement initiative here that we really worked on hard, especially on the local the, Miranda, especially local Miranda, yeah. right? Um, and we did that without any help. We're still doing it without from any help. the municipality here. I just want to throw that out, but. You know, we, we did that because we wanted to create not only a platform for us to talk, but a platform for others to talk. Like we have somebody coming on today in, in the second half that's going to come and talk, in about, talk about an event that's real close here on the mm-hmm. Northwest side to, to our studio. And, and part of the reason why we – no one reached out to offer help, but part yeah. of the reason why we're fine without the help is we're not beholden to anyone. We don't have someone that – um, yeah. An investor or someone that's dictating. That's the problem with legacy media is mm-hmm. that somebody's telling them what to say. You, For example, you re, if anybody's still reading the Arizona Daily Star that's been published, I, what, the 1800s, I think this thing started getting published? Mm-hmm. It's not even published here. We That might be— It's out of New York, right? <laughs> well, it's out of— they're publishing it in Phoenix and trucking it down every mm. every night. Yeah. If you read it, if you go through there and actually read it, which I've done a couple times, I still know a couple of people that get it. There's no real local event, at, no local. If there is, it's all jaded and slanted. It's an opinion piece, not news. Right. I'm old enough. I we talk about. I've talked about this at nauseum. I'm old enough to remember when 
the the local and 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 national news readers because mm-hmm. that's kind of what they were. They read you the news with no opinion. It was a public service. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, it was. Mm-hmm. And people would gather around, watch it. The, the president would go on and, and give a speech, and it was the State of the Union. That's back when we had three channels, and it was black and white, basically. Yeah. But everybody, the family would gather around, and everybody would watch it. There would be opinions about it uh, the next day at work or in mm-hmm. the public. Uh, then when we went, and I mentioned uh, Mike Wallace and 60 Minutes, and they realized, hey, we can make money at this. Yeah. And then everybody started opening their channel. Ted Turner was one of the first with uh, uh, CNN. In 24-7, we got to fill up news. Well, now we went from just news uh, to we got a lot of talking. We got 24-7, 365 to fill up. Mm-hmm. We went to a lot of opinions. And no and no investigative reporting to speak of. Right. It just became a, a, a propaganda machine for right. whichever – party the the owners of those companies wanted to push right and nobody benefits from that no no because you know what if you're living in an echo chamber that's why i'm probably an independent myself free thinker independent uh, I, I don't need anybody telling me what to think just tell me what's going on give me right. the facts and i'll i'll dig in there and start uh, forming an opinion based on on what I'm hearing and seeing, and okay. back to the back to this most recent election, I've said it before on a couple of other podcasts. It was it was a gut feel, and I, I you know what, you go back and read, watch some of our tapes. We we nailed it, mm-hmm. almost down to the number. Yeah, of, of elected officials and percentage of in the House, the percentage in the the Senate. I'm talking about U.S. more than yeah. we 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 kind of missed it locally. Yeah, we'll get we'll get into that. We, we got some we, info. We, we got we got uh we we actually we're, we we kind of short yeah sided that. Um, we got to get moving on the show. The guest's gonna be here soon. Beautiful. We're talking about a lot I, more fun stuff. You and I are talking about what we're talking about right now is especially with the the election stuff here in Beaumont County is we're not doing it to be angry. We don't like dislike anybody. I'm, Nobody needs to take this personal, but. What we're doing is we're expressing the call to action for for more yeah. leaders to step up. Well, I'm not mad. Yeah, we I'm need, disappointed. Yeah, we need more leaders to step up, and I want to cover something that's happening that we're sponsoring. That's happening in Jan- January 23rd of 2025. Beautiful. It's a great way to start the new year, right? Everybody's always new year, new me. How about new leaders, mm-hmm. right? Or if you already are a leader, how about learning some new leadership skills? Mm-hmm. And we're part of something called Live to Lead, uh, Experiential. Leadership Summit and Team Coaching Sessions. It's going to be happening at the Oral Valley Church of the Nazarene on January 23rd from 7.45 a.m. to 2 p.m. And That's on a Thursday, by the way, folks. Yeah, the uh, Jose, who runs Awakener, is in char- is putting this whole thing together, and we're helping him get the word out. And I encourage you, if you're a leader or you're considering moving up into leadership or it's you just want to learn some new skills and communicate with folks and be around the leaders in the area... This is the event to do it. Mm-hmm. This is a new event. We're calling it a summit. The reason we're calling it a summit is it's going to continue. We're going to do this every year. We're going to get the the best leaders in the room to have conversations and to work on affecting change. And part of the part of the agenda is mm-hmm. Uh, in between speakers and presentations, yeah, the table that you're sitting at is going to be encouraged to spend a few minutes between each session, yeah, of digging um, in in as a group and, what you're learning and and the feedback you get with each other, which is how you grow, right? And to, this is a John Maxwell event, yes. So you're going to have some cool speakers, John Maxwell, uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, and some others, right? So don't don't miss it. And one of the speakers is a past Olympian, so we don't want to we don't want to miss that. And also, you're going to have Dr. Dan Streeter, who is the superintendent of the Rana Unified School Great District. Guy. He is going to be one of the in person keynote speakers. I mm-hmm. got to see him do a couple pre- presentations. He's been on the show. Don't be one of those folks that misses out. There is a discounted rate rate available right now. If you go to the website, look for the event on Facebook. Go to the website, get your tickets. It's cheaper now, but once December 31st hits, mm-hmm. the price the prices jump up significantly. So don't 
do yourself like that, okay? And when you say December 31st, it sounds a long way off. <laughs> it's it's going to go by like that. <laughs> it's hey, not. I so. want to reiterate something. We are not, I'm, I'm speaking for me, but I know I'm speaking for you. Nobody's angry here. We're disappointed. Right. It's kind of like parents. When, when things don't work out right for your family, yeah. you're not mad per se. You're, <laughs> you want to, what can I do to make this better? Right. And this takes all of us working as a community to say, hey, this is unacceptable. Mm-hmm. This behavior is unacceptable. When it comes to schools, yep. this is unacceptable. When it comes to counting votes, this is unacceptable. What can we do to make it better? Right. Don't sit on the sideline and go, they, it's, it's their responsibility to fix it. Yeah. Yeah, you're so right. Hey, I wish I had more time to talk to you today, yeah. but I think you're going to jump on with Chris well, at 10, I'm gonna right? I'm going to be on with Chris. So uh, we'll I might jump back. on that show with you guys. I don't know. Okay. We'll see. But I want to show a video. There. I want to show a video here. Uh, it's Charlie Kirk. Okay. I don't fully agree with stuff that Charlie Kirk talks about or, you know, everything. But I do uh, applaud him for his immense effort in this election. And I'm going to play We're going to play a short video of him talking about the tactics and stuff they used and how it changed things. Uh, they pretty much threw the book out. And both sides can take stuff from this. So mm-hmm. people go, oh, he's a heavy conservative. Blah, blah. Right. That's fine. But if you listen to what he's telling you, he's giving yeah. you insight on how to approach things going yeah. forward. Listen so, to the words, people. Yeah. And so put your ideology stuff aside. And I'm just going to say a certain group here locally, the Pima County conservative mm-hmm. side. This one's for you. Pay attention. <laughs> And Donald Trump's campaign strategy, of which we helped execute on the ground in some of these states, was that, guys, don't spend your time knocking on doors about a suburban soccer mom who's weighing her options. Instead, because that takes nine contacts to try to get her. Nine points of contact on average. Conversations, discussions, and they could be 30 minutes on it. Instead, turning point, go spend your time in very Republican areas where there are non-registered or what we call disengaged voters. People that like Trump, like his worldview. For example, the bro vote, right? And so this is where we spent our time, and we we harvested, not ballot harvested, but we harvested in a very, very powerful way. At Arizona State University, for example, we registered thousands of young men to vote in fraternities. And that was way easier than us going to try to win over swing voters. And we did a little bit of that, but generally, the Trump campaign was brilliant because they threw the Republican consultant playbook out. The Republican consultant playbook was spend all your time on the middle on those like middle 15% swing voters and go all in. Mm. Trump campaign said, why don't we just make our base bigger? Why don't we just make the people who love us the most? And so what they looked at was demographics. Mm -hmm. And they realized if we can make the electorate 3% more masculine and do, and by the way, they were so smart to do this. This is Susie? This this is Susie Susie and James Blair and uh, La Savita. And they were so smart because they said, wait a second, what is more important than race? Whether or not you're a man or a woman actually dictates your political affiliation far more of a correlation than your race. Mm. So they de-emphasized racial politics and they emphasized more of a masculine machismo approach. And boy, did it work. And not only did it work, you're running up against a woman. So it's easier to kind of make that argument. And so, so I, I don't mean to monopolize no, the time. Th- but this is really interesting. Re- keep going. And, and so what the Trump campaign then did, the, the Republican consultant playbook that Karl Rove basically authored was – Everything is about high propensity. So there's two types of voters, high propensity and low propensity voters. A high propensity voter is typically college educated, lives in the suburbs. You know, they, they watch they watch Chris. They watch CNN. They have an income over one hundred thousand dollars a year. They have two kids and a picket fence and they go to soccer games and they don't commit crimes. You know, that ty- that type of demo. Right. High propensity voters is where the Republican Party has always been focused. OK, those were. But Trump came and he said, no, 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 we're going to focus on low propensity voters. The welder, the electrician, the carpenter, the police officer, or the person that's just not registered to vote, where I thought that Donald Trump was going to win, and I wasn't as confident as anybody else, okay, was when I started to see the voter registration surge across the country in the summer before this last summer. New people that were registering to vote were registering at a clip three to one versus Democrat. In Pennsylvania, for the first time ever. Wow. In Pennsylvania, for the first First time time ever. ever. Okay. Thanks for putting that on, Raul. So, Couple key points there was talking about the voters, the the non voters that they essentially went and targeted to register to vote. Uh, the, the full video is available on the Charlie Kirk show. Go and watch it and listen to it if you can. But there's something to learn there. My me, myself included, with our company being involved with the uh, you know doing advertising and stuff for different campaigns and whatnot. It's important for us to see how that approach was taken. 
You can't lose on information. Educate yourself. We're going to run to a quick break real quick, and then we're going to have the Happy Hive Market jumping on with us so we can talk about a cool event coming up in December. We'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Alan Murdoch. For the past 20 years, I've been buying, fixing, and selling properties right here in Southern Arizona. And I want to buy your property. Whether it's a house, apartment, commercial building, or vacant land, regardless of the condition or the situation, I want to talk to you. When you sell to me, I pay cash and it's hassle-free. No repairs, no closing costs, and no commissions. If you have a property you don't want to deal with and you want a quick solution, call, text, or visit SellTalon.com. Again, that's SellTalon.com. Discover the power of 88 Crime, where your anonymous tips are rewarded with cash. When you call in anonymously with a tip, you are given a code. With the code and a password, you can walk into a bank and redeem your reward anonymously. If your anonymous tip results in a felony arrest, you can claim up to $2,500 cash reward. Let's stop the silence on crime and strive for a safer community. For more information, please visit 88crime.org or call 88crime. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. We can print anything on our soft vanilla logo cookies. We deliver them and other sweet treats locally. We are located at 4249 West Ina Road, Suite 121. Call us 520-300-1131. We bake smiles. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. All right, welcome back. Thanks for continuing to listen and watch. I see we still have a, f a few viewers actually still on here, which is really, really cool. During the ad sets, I see people pop out and come back, but for the most part, they stay. Uh, it's really, really awesome. I'm happy to have you here today because you're the happy hive market. Yes. Right? You're behind the whole thing. Yes. I was just telling you before the show that... Uh, I had seen you before at the Button Brew House and yes, some other yes. things. So it's really cool to have you here in studio. You reached out to us on the local Miranda platform. And here you are. How hard was that? It was so simple, you guys. Um, <laughs> and I was just saying earlier that this is a whole new demographic that I didn't think I like to tap into. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes when people think about social media, it's like just Instagram, Facebook. But there is so much more to reaching your demographic and building your business. And I mean, to have support around the Marana community is fantastic. Yeah, it's really, really cool. I like what you're doing. I Thank see that you. you're putting together some different markets for, for vendors and stuff like that. So let's jump into how this started and why. Yeah. So I actually will take it back a couple years. I flunked out of college, didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, my mother-in-law actually gave me the inspiration to just, why don't you pursue business? It seems like that's like the perfect mindset for you. My dad is in business. My mom is in business. And I thought, well, that's absolutely perfect. I love healthcare. So I actually pursued my bachelor's. I graduated my bachelor's in 2022. Mm -hmm. And I said, why the heck not? Let's get my master's in 2024. So I just graduated with my master's. Congrats. Um, and I thought, how do I pay for my master's degree? You know, I want to build the community together. There's not really much happening in Marana. Um, there's always a downtown market. And to be honest, I hate driving. I hate <laughs> driving the 30 minute drive, finding parking and then having to drive all the way back. Right. I have a son. And so I thought, why don't we just build something here, something that's within our community? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's pretty much where the Happy Hive was born. I had some friends reach out to Button Brew House right here. Um, and it was just, it boomed from there. We got some vendors together. Um, we put on some events, uh, about mo pretty much monthly we were doing events. Um, right. And we're kind of creating a stepping stone for these markets in the Miranda community. I've also expanded into some downtown places and then also at the 49er Country Club on the east side. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. 
So you have an event coming up on this side of town that yes. you're putting together. So what, what is that and when? Yes. So I have partnered with the Omni here on the northwest side in Marana, and we are doing an event that is a holiday brunch market per se. So we're going to have some vendors out there. The Omni is so wonderful, and they are going to be putting out some brunch opportunities. We have adults. We have a pancake bar. We have burritos. Um, we're also going to have a sugar cookie decorating opportunity for the kids. It's going to be so much fun. That's really cool. Yeah. And it's complimentary. So, like, bring the kids out. That's really where my passion is with Happy Hive. I have a five-year-old, and it's so hard to go places with kids where you're not wrangling them. (laughs) And so I was like, how do we create this event that we can let the kids run free on a Saturday, let them run in the grass, play with each other, create an environment where the community comes together, and we're supporting and shopping small. Um, We really want to bring together the community. We want to make sure our money is flowing internally to our community and helping the small businesses while we're at it. Yeah. What is, what fuels you to do this? I mean, because you're putting together a lot of different pieces for for people. There's a lot of sacrifice that goes into this. Yeah. And you got to deal with a lot of, so I put a couple, I put a couple events together, probably not at Mm -hmm. the scale that you're doing, Mm -hmm. but you always have so many different variables and personalities and stuff to deal with. Right. Absolutely. And I (laughs) don't mean to be mean, but there's some prima donnas that come through where it's like, I got to be at the front. I'm, oh, I'm not, you know what I mean? So like what I, knowing all that stuff that goes behind it, Mm -hmm. I have to ask what fuels you to do this. So my mission statement is community over competition. And so the baseline of it all is that we're here to be together rather than competing with one another. Mm -hmm. Everyone can win. Everyone can be in a place where we're thriving. And I think having clear communication with everybody, I I do vendor applications that are open. I, Mm -hmm. you know, ask all the questions, see what works. And I also curate my markets. You know, I don't want to go to a market where I have 10 jewelry vendors, you know, because then I'm taking away from their opportunity to be – a seller, you know what I mean? They they won't right. be able to thrive if there's so many and it's saturated. So I do curate the markets. Um, and I love being the stepping stone of growth. Growth is the best place to be no matter how uncomfortable it is. I love to thrive in that environment. And mm. I think other people should love to sit in that, that moment of I'm not there yet, but I'm in that process of being where I want to be. And who knows, six months from now, we could go back and and think, oh, my God, I didn't realize how much growth I actually made. So I think being that stepping stone for small business vendors, I've had a lot of vendors come up to me. I've never done a market before. What do I do? How do I get ready for this? And, And so we create a group. Ask questions. Where are you guys buying your lights? Where are you guys buying your tables? You know, where have you found the best success in this, this and that? Mm -hmm. And I think when we get community vendors to chime in and share the information, nothing is is being held or is a secret. Right. You're in a good spot. You know, this is one of the biggest growing or fast biggest growing, one of the fastest growing communities Mm -hmm. in the nation. Yeah. So there's a lot of opportunity for you to, to grow this thing. Yeah. I think, I think. When we think about Marana, Tucson, Oro Valley, we, yes, we are somewhat divided, I guess you could say, but together, again, we're a community. And when we have other markets, there's, you know, the dam market that's happening this weekend, that's happening downtown. The Tanka Verde market is happening on the 7th. We have, um, this is Tucson. We have so many different platforms and people that are supporting this type of community Mm -hmm. that... We just need to lean in, and I think we can really thrive and succeed, you know, yeah. when we have this. And and the community needs it. You know, the community needs a place to, man, it's been a long week. I'm going to have a drink and drink a coffee while the kids play, and, and, and it's a meeting place. Right, right. Now, plus, you come across some cool stuff. You yeah. Know, I, I, I myself have, you know, I always look forward to smaller markets because you come across original products that you mm-hmm. can't get anywhere else, you know, especially, uh, like food wise and stuff. The food is my favorite. Yeah. You always come across something that it's salsa or something like, um, perfect example came across like a, 
it's like a, what do you call it? It's like a bean recipe mm -hmm. and a beans in a bag kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you, you put it in your crock pot and you just leave it and it cooks it's and it makes it like, it makes like this really cool, like bean food thing. I don't know what it is, but I'm obsessed, but I, I it's learned easy. about that from a, a market, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's something that is always in our house Yeah, and we make several times a month cause it's just easy it's just and it easy smells and good. good. Yeah. Yeah. I know there are so many, like even just last night I was scrolling through Instagram and one of the food vendors that I'm friends with, uh, she was like, Hey, I have two trays of cinnamon rolls whoever wants them and I was like hey do you have any left like did I miss it because it had been a couple hours she's like no I have one more mm -hmm. it's a little late but you're welcome to come by I was like say less like I'm on my <laughs> way like I'm gonna come pick them up sourdough cinnamon rolls perfect yeah and you just create relationships with these people like people that you didn't think that you'd meet are people that you're meeting in these markets um, I've created so many friendships with people through these markets that are repeat vendors, people that I just can't wait to see and hug when they come to my events, mm -hmm. um, repeat people that come by and they're like, hey, I'm going to check out your market. You know, I see that you have some new vendors. I'm really excited to come by. Though That's what we're trying to curate here is an environment where people are coming together and we can be respectful of everyone's craft and everyone's creativity. Right. What? What's the frequency of your events? Like how often are you having them? Um, right now, I'd say usually about every month or every other month right now. Um, I have the December market coming up on the 14th. It's from 9 to 12 at the Omni. And then soon the Happy Hive is turning 2 in January. So I'm going to be opening applications soon for the Happy Hive birthday. And that will be back at Button Brew House. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so back, back to where, where you started. started. Yeah. yeah, no, that's really, really cool. Yeah, so we're really excited, and I know that the 49er would love to have another event, so we're looking to see maybe in the spring to come back out there and, and work with the east side community. But, I mean, just being able to go back to the roots of where it all started is right. kind of really exciting. Right. Have you uh, have you gotten in touch with Discover Marana or anything like that in regards to your um, market? Have they I put anything in there? I don't think I've been in touch with Discover, but I have been in touch with Amanda Wiggins from um, the, the Commerce. Yeah, okay, from the yeah. Chamber of Commerce. She's awesome. Yeah, she is. She is such a sweet lady. Yeah, you should um, reach out to Stephanie over at Discover Miranda. They have a real yeah. cool website that they post uh, yeah. events and some information for people to go and check out things for certain weekends yeah. and events that are going on. So it's another good element to... Absolutely. To what you're doing and kind yeah. of what we're doing. Exactly. You know what exactly. I mean? So, yeah, I didn't know if you had done that yet. So I no, figured I'd give some all. insight. It's a good yeah. little thing to do. I love that. Yeah. Miranda's a good place. I, I like it here. I'm, I'm going to stick around. This is. Uh, I love the northwest side of town. You could never pull me anywhere else. Mariana <laughs> is where my heart is. I have everything I need. I've got Costco, Target. Yes. Home Depot. My son loves Ace. He loves to oh, go yeah. to Ace Hardware. He loves to look at everything in Ace Hardware. So we've got a little bit of everything in Mariana, and everything's like 10 to 15 minutes driving mm -hmm. distance. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It. You can't beat it. It's pretty cool. I So. Regarding the event stuff, just from things I've experienced, and we're just going to have fun talking about this. Yeah. Stuff. I'm just going to ask some, some yeah, let's off, go for off, it. The, <laughs> off the wall questions. I'm here for it. So the first one I want to ask is like, is there a product or category of products that seems to do better than others at markets? Or is it just depend on the clientele that comes is it very what or is it, you know, is it like food for sure? Or yeah. is it like, you know, hats or uh, something, jewelry, something else? What is the will, category that I you're will say seeing? Food. food is obviously always going to be number one. I feel mm -hmm. like it's an easy uh, market pull. Right. Um, and everyone cooks something so different. So you're always trying new things. You want to try new things. I will say experiences. So when I say that, I mean like the hat bar experience. You're coming and you're building a trucker hat. You're coming and you're getting permanent jewelry to match with your mom. You are coming out to, um, like, some people will do, like, the trucker hats. We have the jean jacket bar I've seen, um, permanent jewelry, um, like, pick your florals. So experiences on where people get to, like, be a part of their purchase is really what thrives. Um, but I know a lot of people have diehard favorites. You know, there are mm -hmm. a lot of people out here like if you're coming for a specific vendor, you're you're gunning for their table <laughs> the second you know that they're set up. I know um, my friend Sarah, she does sourdough pastries and she almost every time gets sold out or she's almost sold out okay. because her pastries are one of a kind and 
everyone's a part of the sourdough kick, which is phenomenal. It's good for your gut health, right? Yeah, so, it's what I've heard. Yeah, so food, and I feel like experiences. Hats go really well. Um, one of my friends, Brianna, she does Harper and Honey. She's in Marana as well. Um, her business is veteran and Marana owned. Mm-hmm. Um, she does trucker hats. She does permanent jewelry. She does the wide brim hats. Okay. Um, she actually just did an event uh, downtown when Teddy Swims was here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, All right. So building, I mean, like having the opportunities, these businesses get to have like other opportunities outside of, you know, markets, which is really cool. But Right. Well, my next yeah. question was like, is there some some businesses you wanted to shout out? And looks like yeah, you already got. I, I mean, I love everybody. <laughs> God, it's so hard to just shout out, but like repeat vendors that come mm-hmm. by, you know, a friend of mine, um, the boutique is Coyote Collective Boutique. She is the sweetest gal ever. She's actually moving back to the Midwest to be with her family. And she was at my market. It's one of her last ones. And then she's going to be at the Tank of Verde market. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's a great business if you're looking for a boutique, if you're looking for, you know, caramel apples, Applicious. There's just so many businesses that offer so many different things. Um, And then you get people who are inspired to start businesses because of other people. So, again, my friend Sarah, she inspired her friend Krista to really step outside of her comfort zone and start a business. Mm -hmm. And now she does Dash of Delicious, and she's – her background is being a chef. And so she's curating these spices for people, making Thanksgiving so much easier. I'm like, yes, I want to buy your spices. It's going to make my Thanksgiving so much easier. Um, So, yeah, there's just so many businesses that are are – a part of this community and I couldn't be more grateful because the happy hive wouldn't be able to be anything without the vendors Mm -hmm. that come and join. And I think, um, I think that we're we're doing a really good thing here. I think that we, I think we also, my vision would be to create something that's regular right now. I'm doing monthly every other month vendor events, but I'd love to keep something that's like, you know, every first Saturday is the happy, happy hive market Mm -hmm. and you can count on it being there and know what's going to happen. Um, so we're getting there. We're learning, yeah. we're learning and growing as we go. Right. Right. Has there ever been, uh, have you ever banned a vendor <laughs> like 86 to, <laughs> or I've just never like, had to 86 <laughs> a vendor before <clears throat> I'm pretty, I'm a pretty forgiving person. <laughs> I know this is off the wall, but <laughs> Very from awful. experiences, a, yeah, I've no, it, it happens. Seen some wild stuff. There's been some wild stuff that happens. I, I would say in the market <laughs> community, um, let me grab my tea real quick. Yes. Hold on. Yes. You know, and I would say the only thing that I've seen that happens in the market community that actually makes me like disappointed is this cancel culture, blocking culture Mm. where like you have vendors that are similar in a sense and they start blocking people. And I hear about it, you know, or I see it. What do you mean they block people? They're blocking people on Instagram because they're like, oh, we don't want them to see how we're doing. And we don't want to, you know, that copycat culture starts to happen. And and to me, I'm like, well, we're learning and growing from one another, you know, and and kind of like how you had proposed with the Charlie Kirk video that was on. We just need to communicate. Oh, we just preach. if we opened more communication, it would lead to so much more success and so many opportunities, because I think when we jump to conclusion and we take rumor for truth and people assume things, that's mm-hmm. where we fall apart and break. Um, and I think when we are having conversations with people, we open up the opportunity to actually speak our minds in a respectful way. Right. So I, I that's the one thing that I think I've seen the most is like <laughs> people blocking each other on Instagram, which mm. be, is beyond me. But That's interesting because imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Exactly. And I mean, so I always, I, I won't lie to you, when I was really, really new in business, I saw some stuff getting copied that we were doing, mm-hmm. you know, with local Moran and everything. And at first I was kind of like, oh, what are you doing? But then I'm like, wait a second. This is working. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's trending. Peop- yeah, people if, see it. If, they're, if people are copying what you're doing, mm-hmm. it's working. Mm-hmm. They're, it's it's causing an impact per yep. se. So, yeah, I would agree with you on that. That's you know, I was that's interesting to me because I I didn't expect that answer. I expected more of like people <laughs> getting in arguments or that your table shouldn't be here. You know, just that kind of like those little nitpick things yeah, that the happen. Nitpicky things. But no, that's interesting that that's uh. That's come up. So, yeah, guys, if you're listening, just be better. Just talk. And it's okay. Let, let people see Let people see what you're doing. Why would you mm-hmm. – everybody, you know, it's like I get in – I talk to people. So I've had some conversations with some business mm-hmm. owners. And I'm not – I don't want the, the politics stuff to come into yeah, this yeah. conversation per se. But, like, when you start dividing your business by that, mm-hmm. everybody on every side buys stuff. 
Mm-hmm. So it's like, there's, why? There's something for everyone. Yeah. There's something for everyone. You know, I what I like may not be what someone else is mm-hmm. interested in, but you can't seclude or not include a vendor or not include that aspect in your market just because you, maybe you don't like them. You know, maybe a friend of a friend told you or, you know, anything like that. We're here to be stepping stones for one another. And I think the sooner we collaborate, there's more opportunity for success. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Is this your first podcast? It is my first first podcast. Do you believe that, Raul? Do you believe that? (laughs) No, she's doing no. great, though. <laughs> no, he doesn't. I was so hey, nervous. Hey, just a heads up. If you ever need a security guy, uh, I know one, so I got you if you need yeah, the market. Yeah, he's a security guy. I was going to say my husband, so my background, my husband does jujitsu, and I was talking to him, and I was like, oh, I'm so nervous. Like, you're always in the limelight doing things, and he's like, you love to talk. You're good at this. Like, don't be worried. You got it. Yeah, no, this is a great first episode. I thrive episode. here. If, if your first uh, show <laughs> that you've done a good job. I mean, I'm trying my best. <laughs> yeah. Anything on the chat or anything, my friend Raul, in there? My phone's going off, so I don't know. I can't uh, see anything. Other than the Rowdy Society saying good morning, neighbors. That's hey, about good Rowdy. morning. Good morning. <laughs> She's awesome. 80, she is awesome. She is awesome. A five seven two son says viewers matter. Oh, he's all, oh yeah. Come on, man. You know, yeah, that guy's <laughs> awesome. He's a, that that guy is active. I have his name. I, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. It's somewhere <laughs> in my text messages. But hey, yeah, Dave, just to go on your point, what you guys were talking about one of the best quotes I ever heard about that was when Michael Jordan was getting into the world. Show of your politics. face, man. Tell us and show your face. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I didn't want to take it online. Uh, Michael Jordan used to always say he doesn't get into politics or anything like that because Republican and Democrats both buy his products. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But, you know, it's funny, like. We all want the same things. Like, Mm -hmm. if you were to write, like, a list of, like, all right, list the top ten things that you want. I guarantee you the first five to eight are going to be very very similar. similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Mm -hmm. like, so throw all that stuff aside. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. We're all here for the same thing. Yeah. Let's have fun. Exactly. Life is too short. Life is way too short to be thinking about the small things. I feel like in the last two years, I don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. It's just... It's a waste of my time. <laughs> really I'm is. like, life is way too short. Like, brush it right off. Let's just keep going. Like, yeah, role model. How alert. can we? How can we move forward? You know, how can, <laughs> how can we make it better? Like how you guys were talking earlier. You know, we're here to make an impact. How mm. can we be better? How can we move forward? What is it that we need to do to make change? We've got to lead. Yeah, and like you guys were saying, we're we need to create leaders. We right. leaders need to be here because there's a. If we have too many followers, there's not going to be enough people to lead. Right, right. Shameless plug, Live the Lead Leadership Summit that's coming up in January. Yes. Okay, next year. <laughs> be there. If you own business, if you're in, you know, moving up in the chain command, chain of command, all that stuff, work public safety, you should be there. Yeah. What's a, what is that noise? Do you hear that, Raul? The beeping noise? You're like, you're like. Uh, anyways, yeah. what is like a, a a good venue for you? Like, what do you, what what is the happy hive market like as far as setup? Are you looking for to be connected to restaurants or to a alcohol beverage place? Are you looking for, or is it kind of just wherever you f- you see it might fit? I feel like ideally, I love to create an experience, right? When you're coming, right. you're not just coming, you're going to shop and then you go home. We want you to stay. We want mm-hmm. you to hang out for a couple hours. Um, so what I love about Button Brew is that you come in, you can grab a beer on tap and small business. Mm-hmm. Then you can come sit in their beer garden, listen to some live music, walk around the beer garden and, and shop. You right. can look around, grab a couple snacks, grab something to take home, Oh, hey, I found a new hat, a new pair of earrings. Oh, this is a good gift for my mother-in-law, for my mom, for my friend, for my dad. And it creates this experience. Mm-hmm. So I love Button Brew. I love their layout. I love their beer garden. Their layout is beautiful. Um, I feel like a brewery is always really great. Coffee. You can't go wrong with coffee. I am. A, I love coffee. I, I, I used to not ever drink coffee in the morning until I had my son. And What's my, What's the best local plug for coffee? <sighs> I heard you say you used to not drink coffee until you had your son. <laughs> yes. I used to not be a morning coffee drinker. I have enough energy to get up and get going. Yeah. And, Kids, and, I, no. and then I had my son and I realized that's impossible. 
<laughs> um, I have to have coffee in the morning. <laughs> it's, it's not possible to continue. Oh, God. It's part of my DNA now. Oh, absolutely. I've drank so much of it. Morning, and then you have an afternoon cappuccino, yes. and then you get to like four, and you're like, is it too late for a cup of coffee? I think you, it's too late. You know what got me onto the afternoon one was I was in Miami, and I had visited a Cuban restaurant, mm-hmm. and I ate some delicious food. Okay. I had never had like actual Cuban, Cuban food until then. Mm-hmm. And uh, they brought a, a coffee or an espresso right after. Mm-hmm. Like, I was ex- they just do it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Felt guilty, you know, because I one cup, one yeah. cup to me at that that time, mm-hmm. that was enough. Wow, that was a game changer for me after that. Oh, after so they're the ones that technically technically got me hooked on the afternoon <laughs> coffee. coffee. So Miami, thanks thanks a lot for that. But yeah, yeah. no, that midday perk. It's oh. perfect. It's perfect. About three o'clock, sometimes two thirty, but three o'clock is like the perfect time for an afternoon coffee. My um, my husband's grandmother, she has a thermos. And she keeps her coffee. She doesn't have her afternoon coffee. We're like, we got to get in on her coffee because we are a family of coffee drinkers. Let me afternoon ask, let me ask you a serious necessary. question about okay. this 3 p.m. thing, okay? Yes. <laughs> you drink coffee past 4 o'clock and can go to sleep, huh? I can. You can't? I can't. 3 o'clock's my cutoff? I like can. 4 o'clock? I can't. Yeah, no, I can. I, I think the latest I could drink a cup of coffee and still be able to sleep at night is, I think, four. Four, four thirty is like the f- pushing it if I like really wanted, really wanted coffee. Yeah. But I, I'm not, I don't stay up that late really either. Same. I think nine o'clock, nine thirty is really already my bedtime. I get up early. <laughs> we have a five year old, so yeah. he's up at five thirty already yelling and screaming about something. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Veronica Soto is one of our podcasters here. She mm-hmm. has the oversharing podcast. Uh-huh. If you haven't seen it yet, you should. I actually just saw it on Instagram. Okay, check it out. I'm trying yeah. to go try to get on her show with her. It's, yeah, I'd it, love it's to. Awesome. She's got a great demographic and bunch of viewers. She's you know, she's talking about they're wanting to have kids and all this mm-hmm. stuff. And I'm Veronica, if you're watching, you hear this conversation right here. <laughs> yeah. Five thirty. That's you all get the time. Used to it. That's yeah, get used to because like, I she'll ask like hi. I'm like, I'm tired. I'm like I lived a whole life before I even got in here today. That is so accurate. My husband and I joke about that. You know, we, there was, I think he showed me a meme or something. It was like, (laughs) I had a whole life before this and it's 9 a.m. We're like, yeah, we've been up for a while. (laughs) Yeah. I've got a a three-year-old and a, and a 17 month old. Oh, bless your soul. Oh yeah. It's a track meet. Like you're just trying to keep them from just. Oh (laughs) yeah. Oh my gosh, 17 months. I mean, I I will say I miss the baby phase and yeah. we contemplate having another. Um, but God, life is really good with a five-year-old. You know, I don't have to carry a backpack. I don't have to carry extra every, every, everything. Like I can be pretty hands-free with a five-year-old. Yeah. He knows how to use the bathroom. You know, I don't have to. D- yeah, I don't have to do those little things anymore. Yeah. So. Yeah, we were kind of crazy because there was one point where both of our children were in diapers. Ooh. So you get to you change one and then you're go, and then you're going and changing this one and then you're gonna go back to like it's just like team. a continuous thing. Yeah, tag team and seriously, I mean and I love then them though. At least it, you're not yeah. outnumbered. You only have two. Mm-hmm. I have a friend of mine, um, I love her to death. I actually met her through social media. It's crazy that social media brings people together. But um, a friend of mine, she has a set of twins. And then she had a, a baby boy in in between, and then she has another set of twins, two sets of twins. She's five, oh, and man. she's outnumbered. And I am like, bless your soul. She goes, you know what? It was just meant to be. And I was like, I love that for you, but I have one, and that's enough. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we went off track, and it's my yes. fault. No, that's I was okay. asking, I was trying that's to like, okay. what's what's the local coffee plug? What are, what's the bag you're buying? If you're on a spot, where's it from? Oh, gosh. And then we got to go, unfortunately. I can't even remember their Instagram, but they've been to a lot of my markets, and now, recently, they haven't. Now I'm blanking on their name. The reason I ask is I know once I get one from you, my wife's going to be like, go get a bag, or we're going to go get a bag. Harley's Coffee Co. Harley's Coffee Co. Yes. They do pop-ups, um, and God, it's so good. Harley's and they're really great. Yeah, their Instagram is Harley's H A R L E Y S Coffee and then dot co. Okay. Got yeah, it. Yeah, they're great. They've got merch. They're great. Okay. I love them. All right. I'm gonna go get a bag. Yeah. 
Okay, perfect holiday gift. It's the holiday yes. season. Go get it. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching and listening. Thank you yes, so much for joining for today. Me. It was awesome. We'll have you again. You're you're great at talking. <laughs> Jump good. on some other shows here. I will. Yeah, I'd love it's to. really good. And everybody listening on the app today, thank you so much. We appreciate you. You're awesome. Everybody watching on our social platforms, we also appreciate you and love your support. Please help us continue to grow this and share. And if you're looking to advertise or sponsor a show, just let us know and we'll make it happen. Prices are reasonable and easy. Happy holidays. I'll see you next week. Thank you.